Phil's going to update us on what's going on in the sports world. So, Phil, 49ers are 8-0. How long can that last? We're taking it one day at a time. No, better yet, one week at a time as far as the 49ers, and just keep your fingers crossed, okay? Last week, the 49ers did it again. San Francisco had to overcome an early 10-0 deficit en route to defeating the Green Bay Packers 24-20. Quarterback Joe Montana shook off a two-game jinx, passing for 411 yards, including 272 following intermission. Once again, the talented trio of John Taylor, Jerry Rice, and Brent Jones were on the receiving end of TV aerials from Brother Joe. The game marked the return of rambling Roger Craig, who had been sidelined for three weeks with a knee injury. The talented running back snared one pass for six yards while picking up eight more in five carries. Craig said Green Bay's 39-degree temperature didn't help his return. He hopes to be back at 100% by next week. The victory over the Packers gave the Niners a five-game lead in the NFC West. Last week, the Golden State Warriors opened their 1990 season with a record-setting win over the Denver Nuggets, 162 to 158 in the Mile High City. When the final horn sounded, the score established a new NBA record for the most points scored during regulation play, with Chris Mullen leading all with 30 points. That will do it for this edition of Newsline. I'm Iris Imperial. And I'm Philip Hicks. As we leave you tonight, consider this. If you think you've had a rough day, don't complain until you've had a day like this poor guy. See you next week. <laughs> an exercise that you can do while also accomplishing other things in life. You can read a good book, study, catch your favorite television program, or listen to your favorite tunes. So no longer can you make the excuse that you can't do two things at once. The bottom line is that your body receives the required daily allowances of vitamins and minerals necessary for optimum health. This is Philip Hicks reporting for Telenews Health Tips, wishing you the best of health. For seemingly ages, intramural sports have played a major role on college campuses across the U.S. And no matter how many protective devices have been introduced into the sport, no matter how stringent the rules have become, injuries are going to occur, and usually when you least expect it. This has been Philip Hicks for telling you. With two, two weeks already gone by in this year's young intramural football season, we've some seen a lot of exciting play. You no longer have an excuse not to be able to come out, take a break from your studies, and see some exciting football. This, is, this has been Philip Hicks reporting from Telenews. Los Angeles Dodger outfitter Kirk Gibson would rather see clowns at the circus, not on his baseball club. He didn't mind the old shaving cream on the telephone receiver gag, but enough is enough. Recently, Gibson stormed off the field before the start of an exhibition game after discovering someone had put eye black in his cap. Admitting he gets real intense before a game, Gibson threatened revenge in the form of bodily harm, but later changed his mind. I'm not here for comedy, said Gibson, who added he'll probably be fine for leaving. Having recently signed a $4.5 million contract, chances are he can afford to pay the fine. Until recently, I had only heard of flying fish, never flying killer fish. And yet in Colombo, Sri Lanka, a fisherman died after a garfish jumped out of the water and cut his neck. The fish, a forktail alligator gar, struck 21-year-old Anthony Fernando, who died before he reached the hospital. Oh. Well, there is a marvelous actor who captivates their hearts with humor and Bible stories. His characters run the gamut from a friendly farmhand called Cousin Filbert, whose favorite friends are pot-bellied pigs, to an impish Irish elf named Rufus. Well, but my favorite is Captain Cardio, who is the hero of health and fitness. We are blessed to have a host of characters all in one person, and he is here. He is a caring Christian, and his name is Philip Hicks. Please welcome him. Hi, Philip. Hi, Carol. Oh, good to see you. Good to see you, too. Oh, you are so good to come Thank here. You. Your gorgeous wife My and, pleasure. and all your pot belly pigs. We're going to have a, a fun time today, but I want to know about you, first of all, in your childhood. What was your relationship to the Lord? I don't think I had a relationship, Carol. I was always in church, but I never had any peace inside. So I guess I was more of a going through the motions of being a Christian, but not really having caught what a, really, a Christian really is. All right. Yeah. 
And, and you began, yeah, your parents? Parents always, they were very faithful to bring me to church every Sunday. I was so active, whether it be sitting around a campfire singing Kumbaya, or as I got older, I was in the church choir, very active. And I was, of course, a little older, uh, the girls were always in church, so I was always there, you know. So yeah. it was a social club to me more than anything else. But my mother kept praying, yes. and that was the bottom line. And, and somehow along that way, you got off track just a little bit? You might say off track just a little bit. Uh, I tried to, catch, since I had a lot of emptiness inside, I tried to fill up the, uh, the void, if you will, with all different types of things, wine, women, and song, at an early age, right. and in working, saving money for college. I was, I guess, uh, looking for love in all the wrong places, you might say, and uh, I was uh, busy riding motorcycles, having fun, not in a real fast lane, but it started getting faster and faster. Okay. Yeah. And then along the way, you went on a vacation to Fort Lauderdale. What happened well, there? Briefly, my steps took me from Memphis to Atlanta to Aspen, Colorado. Aspen, I thought I had the world by the tail. I was uh, uh, working in a lot of different areas from radio to the uh, restaurant business. I started a clown business, but, you know, a clown is, is happy on the outside, but I was unhappy inside. A fellow told me he kept an apartment down in Fort Lauderdale, so in yes. 1978, I went down there intending to spend two weeks of fun in the sun, but it didn't end up like that. Mm. There was a fellow that came down also to said apartment. He wasn't there for recreation. He'd been ripped off, ripped off in a drug deal, and he couldn't get his money back oh. uh, by himself. So he came to me and said, hey, this guy ripped me off. Can you help me? Oh, my and, uh, goodness. Yeah, I, I justified my involvement because he had been ripped off. Right. But, uh, you know, a good old boy, that kind of thing. But uh, uh, so on a rainy night uh, in that fall, I'm dressed in black like you might see a, a, a cat burglar or something, and, and I'm climbing down a rope off the top of a five-story building. You're he's, kidding. He's, oh, would I kid? No, I you like wouldn't. Yeah. Dear you know, Lord. He should have been the one to climb down the rope, but, you know, yeah. here's that macho guy. I always wanted right. to be a stunt man, and so went in, and the, the fellow came in the, the front door, found more money than I'd ever seen in my entire life, and I wanted to leave. Yeah. But the guy said, no, I want all my money. Mm. I want to wait till the fella comes home. And I got real scared then. My true colors started to surface and found some wine. Pretty soon I had all the courage I needed to stand by his side. Oh. The guy came home unexpectedly. Uh, they were armed. A gunfight ensued. And I began wrestling over a big 357 Magnum with this guy that began going off. Oh. My leg was shattered with a 357 Magnum. Phillip. I'm lying there. 2,000 miles away from home in Memphis, my mother's still praying, and that's when the guy put the gun to my head and oh. went click twice. He was out of bullets, and I shouldn't be here today, uh, but, oh. uh, but God was merciful even then uh, he as really I was, uh, was. He's so faithful. And so, so to make a long story short, if I can, I ended up in a hospital bed, spent a year in traction, Damn. awaiting trial, and it was in that traction that uh, uh, some Christians from a local church, Coleridge Presbyterian Church, really? and uh, they, through their EE program, a young man ended up in the hospital, I was under guard and under heavy medication for 19 days. On the 19th day, I was taken off guard, off medication. The next day, the young man was transferred into my hospital room. He led me to the Lord after making a friend first. He didn't, like, pass out tracks or anything. No. But that night, I cried out and asked the Lord in my heart. No oh. lights went flashing, but I received a peace I'd never had before. The next night, my hospital bed was surrounded by people from this guy's church oh. who loved me unconditionally. Oh. And then the next night, he was transferred back to his original room. So and the Lord there. put him there to do a mission Don't and you to know change it. your life. I was the first person he ever led to the Lord. Now, now he's an evangelist in England. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Yes. Well, you yes. were the, the first success, the first time you ever the, did it. First fruit, if you, if you will. You know, I mean, for a long time, I was a real fruit. But I was the first fruit for him in, in Christ Jesus, and it was exciting, well, very exciting. After that, didn't you have to go to prison? Well, that's one of those small things happen when you get charged with a crime down in Florida or anywhere yes. else. And uh, because of the magnitude of my case, there was a lot of publicity. And because I, was, I had a lot of, quote, unquote, good friends and people worked in business growing right. up in Memphis other places, I had a lot of people that wanted to come to the forefront and vouch for me, give him another chance, so to speak. Right. But, uh, uh, but uh, the God wanted me to go to prison instead and come to terms with him for the first time in my life. And by the time I got to the trial, I insisted I'd be allowed to tell the truth. Even my public defender said, don't say a word. But I said, no, I want to tell the truth. And, and I did, and I was, but I was still sentenced to life plus 15 years in prison. Oh, my goodness. Yes, but there was such a joy in my life that it did not make any difference. I mean, you had to experience yourself to realize where I was coming from, Carol, because uh, 
I mean, I had read the book about Johnny Erickson, yes. and through God's grace, she was giving thanks in all circumstances, and I had yes. begun to do that, yes. and it was working. God was honoring it, and so I had so much grace operating. I knew I wasn't going to be in prison long, but long enough to come to terms with the Lord, wow. and that's what happened. And, yeah. and how did you get released? Well, I was at Rayford, Florida, which is across from death row, one of the worst prisons in the United States. And there uh, I walked with the Lord for about two years. Two and years. I chose oh. to follow him instead of looking for release and all this stuff. Exactly. And during this time, uh, the Supreme Court of Florida changed the law and said that, that you got to read jury instructions. Now, when I told the truth, it flipped out the judge. It confounded him, and he stopped the trial and sent the jury in, and he forgot to read jury instructions. Praise, Praise the, the Lord. 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 Amen. Praise the Lord. It was exciting. And so, so you were released on, on that real technicality? Exactly what you'd call technicality, but you know, Carol. The Lord made it happen, That's though. it. That's it. You know, it's just like when he confounds the wise. Yes. You know, I mean, yes. the foolish things confound the wise. It was foolish of me to tell the truth, but it confounded the judge, exactly. and the Lord was in on that whole thing. I mean, uh, the, the public defender said, don't say a word but I chose for the first time in my life to obey God instead of man and the Lord honored that Hallelujah. it was exciting very very exciting so when you came out of prison you, you turned to a whole new way of glorifying the Lord utilizing your acting ability and, and your characters how did the characters evolve well they they actually evolved later on it's just that it's like all the Christians surrounded me down in Fort Lauderdale, and they were from every denomination of the sun, and they all encouraged me and loved me, and they all brought me a wife to be, and this and that, and I made a lot of mistakes, Carol. It wasn't pie in the sky. You know, right. I made some wrong decisions and everything, and I, and I fell some, but the Lord was just that right there with me. But during the next three or four years, I went to uh, uh, Tulsa, Oklahoma, and I got my degree at Oral Roberts University in oh. television and journalism. And it was during that time that I began working in acting some. Uh -huh. and, and it was from that uh, lady from the, uh, and of course, I'd been a clown before, and now as a Christian clown, I had a lot more to share, something that would, would take root than just going around as a clown making people laugh. You know, it started in the heart. And so from that clown base, if you will, I began creating other characters, such as the elf. Hey, how are you? You know? Yeah. Or, or, and then a lady from the Heart Association saw my elf and said, you ought to be Captain Cardio. And so we breathe the life into that character. To, uh, so that's how this began. And of course, my, my last name being Hicks, me being from Memphis, I'm a natural country cousin. Thus, we formed Cousin Philbert and my pet pig, Wilbert. And you... You train the pigs yourself, and, and you, yes. you do shows. Where, where do you reach out? And I know you, you, you reach mostly to children. Definitely, definitely. Well, you know, I mean, the parents, the adults, we've lived our life. The children are the, our hope, and yes. they're the ones that need to be an example for us. And I really believe churches are spending far too much money on the adults when they need to reach the children. And so uh, God is opening doors not only in schools, both secular schools, Christian schools, churches. We've been on some TV programs. This past week, I was just booked to open over in Vegas for Jeff Foxworthy in December. Wow. And so all these different things are happening. Oh, and the Lord's opening the light or the door for me to go in in the secular area as well. Now, it's very, very exciting in the thing. And it's uh, uh, the, the children are really embracing especially, uh, well, not just Captain Cardio, but the pigs are bringing such a delight. And uh, they're such an object lesson anyway. And, of course, most of America have a magnet pig on the refrigerator, let's face it. You <laughs> yes, know? they so, do. So it's for some well, reason. We're going to take a peek at, at those characters. But okay. first, I'd love you to uh, do one of your characters for us and, and meet me in the kitchen where we're going to cook. I, and I know you're not going to tell Hamlet, but we're, we're going to make some stuffed pork chops because they're one of my favorites. And uh, Cousin Filbert's going to join us. Okay. So we'll, we'll see you in the kitchen in, in just a second. We are here with Cousin Filbert, and I know this is new to you to be in a kitchen, but I want to show you how to make stuffed pork chops. It's really very easy. No, wait a minute. You're not... You didn't cook my pig, did No, you? I didn't. No, no, no. I these are, not. These are store bought gracious, things that, get real that we, don't, we don't really bother about. But first, we're going to make the stuffing. Is that okay with you? Yes. I want oh, you. Man. We melted a little bit of butter, just about a quarter of a cup, and we're going to pour in the onions right in there. I don't see no quarter in this cup. No, no. It's a quarter of a cup. Oh. That's oh, right. Me. How many onions you want in there? All of them. Oh, good. All of them. Oh, this is all so All of the fun. parsley. Now, my, my wife tell me never to scrape the pan because you might put a dent in it. That's all right. That right? You, you can just stir them around. We're going to put it up a little bit higher so that we have 
Just these line up. Cookies. That's perfect. Okay, good. Now, what we would do was let these simmer until they're all kind of soft and, and wonderful to look at. Let me, let me stir. You can stir just a little. I'll be stir and crazy. then we would add about a, a full cup of wonderful chicken broth. Mm, smells good. It smells good already. You know, and you know, so, chickens go with, with ham, like ham right, and eggs. Right. <laughs> <laughs> they really do. We put a little salt and pepper to taste. This is kind of ad-libbed and improvised. Mm -hmm. Now, well, I'm going to ask you, I'm going to stir that up because this, I want you to help me break up this bread. All Just right, take give this. me some bread. There you go. <laughs> Here we go. Just break it into, no, not in there, in this. Oh, okay. Over. This, you. This, this is what Christians call breaking bread? Breaking bread together. Oh, That's I the like best that. kind. <laughs> now, once we get this all broken up, we're going to break an egg in it. Okay? No. Yes, sir. And we're going to mix all of this together oh, with sage to taste. No. Now, you have to be careful with sage because it, it could make it too heavy tasting. Why do they and call that sage? Because it's it's just ground up sage that grows out in the, in the wonderful prairies. On the prairies? Uh, on the prairies. I thought that was just in the western books. I didn't know it was real. It's real. Smell that. It's, <laughs> oh, oh, wow. It's, it, it's really good. Now, sure what we is. would do is pour this thing when it is all been simmered. Don't burn so, yourself. I'm not going to do that, honey. You are a big help in the kitchen. Oh, I love you. you. Thank you. you I can now, do dishes too. Can you turn the, this thing this thing off yes, so we don't I'd burn love anything? To. And we mix this all together. You see, and it becomes the stuffing. And wow. this is all ready to go now. So that's what when they Yes. When they stuff a turkey, they yes. do a similar thing? It, that's exactly the same kind. I'm now, so this is wise. your pork chop, and this is mine. Okay. And if you'll do just exactly what I do with it, we're going to cut it. Here we go. Okay. Take your knife. I'm going to take mine. And like we're just going to, we're going to cut this part here so that we're making a pocket to put the stuffing into. And always wash your hands before you do this, Absolutely. Right? We yes. did that. I promise you. Now, here. we Have you got it? I'm so that almost, you go right to the bone. Yes, sir. And we make a nice pocket. We ought to this. do a medical show. This be like doing <laughs> surgery, you know. <laughs> you are heaven. I can okay. see Okay. Now, Dr. Welby. Silbert, I want you to take your spoon. Yep. Okay? Spoon. And just spoon a little bit of this right into here. Mm, into so the middle good. part of it, you see, okay. yeah. until you get it kind of full. Yeah. There yeah. you go. Okay. Oh, you're wonderful. I, I, then well, you're a good teacher, Carol. <laughs> you're just you can teach a pig anything. I mean, pig farmer anything. <laughs> okay. Then we're going to dip it on one side and the other into the egg, and then into the breadcrumbs. And make sure that you seal it on the side like this with breadcrumbs. That holds it all oh, together. Oh, yeah, that looks and good. And then we put it in this wonderful pot that we melt. No, 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 no. Now we're going to put it in. I'm getting hungry. It looks real good. Can you take yours out of I'm the stuff take mine so out I can do my... And you put yours in. Oh, thank you. We've got a whole dance going here. We always let ladies go first when they do this stuff in two guys. So y'all help right. out. Yeah. We've got ladies one go minute to show you that. We're going to brown it on both sides. Then you put it in the oven so that we bake it for about a half hour more just to finish uh, cooking the pork. But that ain't in the oven. That's on top of the stove. First of all, we're going to brown it on the top. Here, oh, wipe your hands thank off. You. And I'm going to show you what the finished product looks like. And Cousin Filbert, I would like you to taste this well, and to great. have a good time with it because I have another guest waiting for me. I need to take my apron off just to greet her at the door. Yes. Because she has a big treat for us to listen to. Here you go. Oh, thank you so have much. a little bit. Oh, I'll thank love you. you. I love you too, cousin. We'll be back. Sorry. He's going to be here. I'm going to be there in one minute. Thank you. You know, you know. I hope my pig don't find out about this, because you know they've been bringing home the bacon for me a long time here, and boy, they get so scared. Woo! They get. I'm nervous. ready, Gilbert. Sure. Okay. Thank oh, you. I can get on the pig train. See ya. You know. We never know what shape or form those messengers from the Lord might be. In the, in the Bible, they took on all kinds of, of shapes, and, and some, some of them were really big heroes. But we have one that I know comes to us on a train, and his name is Rufus. He's an elf, and he's full of the Lord's word. Here he comes now. <laughs> 
Hi, Hi, Rufus. Hi, Carol. It's so nice to see you. It's good to have you here. <laughs> oh, it's great to be here. I know that you love children. Oh, yes. Are there any children here today? Well, look oh. down here. Wow. Yes. <laughs> it's hard to kind of see when you just now got off my, my train. You know how it is, don't you? Well, do you have a special message, a word from the Lord that you'd like to impart to these kids? Because they need it. We all need the Lord. Oh, yes, we do. We all sure. need to encourage each other. And yes, matter of fact, I do have a great story for Tell you. Tell us. Yes. Why? It deals, on, deals with someone encouraging me. Yeah. You know, uh, in fact, it was because of a young lady. I was out checking out things for Santa Claus one day, and you can lead him if you want to, but the bottom line is every good and perfect gift is from above, boys and girls. That's right. You believe that? Yes. It's true. Yes, sir. Well, I was out working hard. I was trying to do a good job, but people kept making fun of me. They were saying, you'll get, never get anywhere in life. You're just an elf, and Santa's got the most important job. And I, I was feeling kind of sad one day, and up walked a young lady. Yes. And she said, you know, Mr. Elf? And I said, what? I said, hey, she said, <laughs> she said, your job's so important. Why, why, when my brother got a toy microphone, when he was just a little boy, <laughs> he began practicing with it, and today he's a famous broadcaster. Yeah, all because you made the toy microphone. Your job is so important. Why, why, we never ignore you because we know, in fact, our parents, she said, teach us that everybody's job is important. Yes, sir. So I thought about it that day, and I realized that, wow, I am important after all. You know, the Bible says that, that, that one day Jesus was out there on some hill or something, preaching and teaching, and all the children wanted to see him. And, and some, of the, some of the tall people said, said, get away, shoo, shoo. Uh -oh. Who put that tree there? Anyway, said, shoo. And, 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 and Jesus said, no, suffer, that means allow. <laughs> he said, suffer the little children to come unto me because such is the kingdom of heaven. And ever since I learned that, I realized that children are more special than anything on the earth. Why, you're the examples for us, boys and girls. You're so special. Everybody right now say, I'm special. I'm special. Because God made me special. Because God made me special. And I'm going to encourage others. And I'm going to encourage others. Oh, that's so nice. That oh. makes my heart so, so happy. Well, I got to go now because I got to go encourage someone else just like, like that young lady encouraged me. Well, thank you for coming, Rufus. Oh, oh you're so welcome. Don't be late and hurry back. Oh, I won't. Okay. Remember, everybody, love one another. God bless you. Bye-bye. <laughs> Bye, Rufus. Bye-bye. Bye. Rufus is so much fun. Don't you love him? He was yeah. terrific. He's kind of like a, a hero. And all of us have to be wise in following not only rules of, of the Bible, but also they told us to, to keep our temple, to keep our body strong. And I have a hero I would like you to meet who goes all around telling children just how to do that. His name is Captain Cardio. And here he is. Hello, Carol. Hello, Captain. Hi, boys and girls. Welcome. Hi. Glad to be here today. My, you're strong. Well, you know, it's not so much as strong, it means healthy. A lot of people are buff, but they're not healthy, Carol. Right. It's important that we get strong in the Lord first in our spirits and then let it work out from that. You know, on that note, God wants us to be found healthy and blameless in spirit, soul, and body. Yes. And so we're traveling all over. These are the superheroes we're looking for right there. Such is the kingdom of heaven. So we're encouraging you all, boys and girls, to get healthy, not only in spirit, in your emotions, but also your body. We've got a great song to sing today. Can we sing that? I would love it to sing. What is it? Well, it's called, Mama, If You Love Me, Don't Feed Me No Junk, because I want to do the cardio funk. Whoa. Yes. Would you like to learn how to do that? Well, let's okay. everybody stand yeah. up. All right. These are my here new cardioettes, go. Carol. All right. Okay. You're going to have to lead us, Captain. All right. Here we go. Let's everybody get the beat. One, two. One, two, three. Mama, if you love me, don't feed me no junk, because I want to do the cardio funk. Mama, if you love me, change your habits today, because I want to live the healthy way. All the kids at my school, they laugh and jeer. They call me names, which brings me to tears. At recess, I'm always the last in the race. I get so embarrassed, I cover my face. I try to make friends with the girls and boys, giving them candy and even my toys. But nobody invites me home after school. I'm beginning to feel like a living a zoo. Everybody sing. Mama, if you love me, don't feed me no junk. 
Cause I want to do the cardio funk. Mama, if you love me, change your habits today. Cause I want to live the healthy way. I heard you tell Auntie, it's only baby fat, that when I grow up, I'll lose all that. But the nurse at my school said blood fat begins at the age of two, not 10 plus 10. Teacher said good food, exercise, and rest are essential ingredients for being the best. She said good habits are the only way to live a long life, live healthy today. Mama, if you love me, don't feed me no junk, cause I wanna do the cardio funk. Mama, if you love me, change your habits today, cause I wanna live the healthy way. The world today is such a busy place. Everyone's flying in a rapid pace. The fast food houses fill the streets. It's so easy to stop for a fattening treat. Sure, I love the fries and a toy in a box, but do I have a choice? I'm a kid, not a box. So think about it, Mom. I love you and Dad. I want to be healthy, not chubby and sad. Mama, if you love me, don't feed me no junk, because I want to do the cardio funk. Mama, if you love me, change your habits today, because I want to live the healthy way. So what do you say, boys and girls? Let's live healthy, OK? Yeah. All right. All right. Yeah. Captain. OK. Hi, you are the best. I have some pet pigs ready to, to play with you right now. Would you like to come and see them? Yeah. Come on with me. Come on. Let's go. Come on. Hey there. Hey. Partners, oh, glad to have you here. Gilbert. Yeah, cousin Carol, good to have you here. Yes, good morning. This here is Wilbur. He's a special pig. Oh, and does he do tricks like you said? Rumor travels fast, doesn't it? <laughs> yes, yes, sir. He's a very special pig. Would you like to see him do some tricks? Yes, he's the one that helps you bring the word of the Lord to children That's everywhere. That's right. Because you know, Carol, they got Nintendo games and they got fun things. They got things to play with. They got yeah. TV. Right. But kids need something fun, you know? And when you bring them up here and let them have fun, they learn a lot easier and they want to learn too. It's Absolutely. great. It's Absolutely. great. Praise God. So what do you want to do first? Well, I know what. You know, every good pig needs a red carpet. You know, it's like his stage. Yes. Yeah. But I don't want you to upstage him, all right? I, no, I okay. promise. Okay. All right. So if you'll hold the pig a minute. I'm holding him. Come here, Wilbur. Why? Come here, Wilbur. Come here. Now, don't you get any hogs and kisses from my no, pig. I, I didn't mean to. Okay. Didn't mean I to get real that. jealous here. <laughs> so here's what we're going to do. My boys and girls, why don't we make y'all the official piglets today, all right? Yes. Y'all can be, yes. all right? Okay. Yes. Yes. Okay. Yes. Y'all can be the official TBN Carol's Pig Show, all right? <laughs> okay. Oh, everybody say push. Push. Say push, everybody. Push, everybody. Push. Push, push, push Wilbur. Push, 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 push. No, push. push, push Wilbur, don't shake your head at me. Push, push Wilbur. Push, all right, I'll get you. Whoa, oh, good pig. Whoa. Give Wilbur the big hand. Woo, Wilbur. Come here, Wilbur. Oh, Cousin Carol? Yes. I bet one of our piglets would like to be rolled by a pig today. I'm sure they would. Who wants want to be to rolled roll? by a pig? Sheldon, Sheldon, come on over here. Over there. Okay, Sheldon. What you want you? I want you to lay down with your head here. No, 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 your head here. Feet over, because I want you to be able to smile at the camera. But you know, since you're a member of the official pig club, let's put this pig nose on you, all right? Take your hat off, or maybe Carol can help I'll you. I'll hold it. There you go. Okay. This is wonderful. But watch it now, pig. Wilbur might get fresh with you, though. Okay. All right, lay down. Okay. Put your hands on your chest. Everybody say push. Push. Push, Wilbur. Push. 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 Oh, he's push. on a roll now. <laughs> Come on, let's hear Wilbur. Yeah. Oh, well, right. I only got one problem. What? Which one's the pig? Oh. Ah, just kidding, just kidding. Thank you, Sheldon. He's not a pig. Way to go, Sheldon. You're not afraid, are you? Why are you shaking? <laughs> <laughs> hey, give me the pig nose. Oh, you just go and wear it a while. You look good in that. Yeah. Oh, yeah, can we do yeah. some more tricks? Yes. How about some volunteers for a figure eight, boys and girls? Okay, you yeah. two and you two. Come on over okay. here. Two of you stand over there right. and two over here. All right, what I want you to do, everybody draw a big eight in the well, up in the air there. Now throw the eight over here. Yes, all right. Yeah. Now, Wilbur's going to walk on your eight because this is a team effort here, okay? Yeah. Here we go. We're going to do a figure eight. Everybody say figure eight. Figure eight. Figure eight, Wilbur. Figure, figure eight. eight. Come on, Wilbur. Wilbur. Figure eight. Here figure we go. Figure Give it up for Wilbur. Eight. Yeah. Woo! Come on, figure eight. Figure eight. He, he used to do fours, but he kept running in the wall and flattening his nose out. Oh, well. We, can, we, can we do basketball, too? Yes. We okay, can real quick. Let me get this basketball. Y'all run, sit down. Let me have a couple volunteers. We're running out of time. Okay, come on up here. Those are the volunteers. Come, come, come on. 
Run okay. back, baby. Sit down. There we okay. go. Now. Need one of you sit down there? There we okay, go. Here, you can sit down there. Here we go. Okay, come on. Come, you sit with me. Here go. There we go. All right, throw the ball down there and say, get it, pig. He's the only basketball playing pig in California. Boy. Get it, pig. Get, get it, Wilbur. pig. Here we go. Get it, Jack pig. passes the ball to Wilbur. He yes. dribbles once. Oh. He drives down. Oh. He goes up. Oh. oh. Here you go, Wilbur. Get it, Wilbur. Get it, Wilbur. Here we go. Yay. Yay. You know what you call that? What do you call that? That's a ham dunk. <laughs> No, it's a ham dunk. Ham dunk. Well, he has made more than a ham dunk for the Lord. Uh, and you, you keep know it. you keep touching children's I hearts. Will, Carol. Well, you don't stop and don't you stop, stop out there. No. We no. give glory to the God in, in animals God. and in people and That's in farmyards. Right. Everywhere you are, know that he loves you. Keep telling people. We'll see you next time. God bless you. Bye-bye now.